Selling covered calls is one of my favorite ways to generate consistent monthly cash flow. Over the past 20 years, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars selling covered calls. In this video, I'm going to show you not only what covered calls are, but what is the best way to trade your covered call positions. What is a covered call? A covered call is simply a stock position where you own at least 100 shares of a stock and you sell someone on the right to call your stock away from you at a certain price. Here you see a cover call I did several months ago in my smaller option trading account. To create this cover call position, I bought 100 shares of Bank OZK, ticker symbol OZK. I then simultaneously sold the OZK June 21st $40 cover call. This position cost me $38.93 per share. So I bought 100 shares of Bank OZK. I then sold some on the right to buy that stock for me for $40 per share at any point between April 22nd when I did this trade and June 21st when this cover call expired. They had the right to buy that stock from me for $40 per share. In order to compensate me for giving them that right, they gave me the difference between $40 per share and the $38.93 per share that this position cost me. So they paid me $1.07 per share to give them the right to buy OZK from me for about two months at $40 per share. So why did I do this trade? Why did I sell someone the right to buy the stock from me at $40 per share when I just bought the stock? I do this and a lot of traders do this because of the consistent monthly cash flow this can generate. I was potentially going to be in this stock for about two months. So I potentially receive $1.07 per share. Plus, if the stock was about to go ex-dividend, I'd also be lined up to receive the dividend if I still own the stock on the ex-dividend day. Since this was a two-month trade, I could potentially do six of these trades a year. That would mean for owning this asset, if I own this stock, I could potentially receive $6.42 per year in just cover call premium. And that's on top of the dividend that Bank OZK pays. If I own the dividend on the ex-dividend date, which happens every quarter, I'd also receive that dividend. So if you have a few of these cover calls in place that you run ongoingly, it can really generate some nice, consistent monthly cash flow for you. That's what investors like about cover calls. They can give you that nice, consistent monthly and yearly cash flow. They can also do something else. Let me show you the chart of Bank OZK when I did this trade because you'll see that cover calls, they can do something really nice for you in addition to giving you nice, consistent monthly cash flow. Here you see the daily chart of Bank OZK when I placed this trade. This yellow area here in the top right is the day that I did this trade. Notice that Bank OZK was trading for around $45 per share. Remember, I sold the $40 cover call. That meant that Bank OZK OZK could come down over 10% and I'd be covered by that cover call that I sold. Not only did I receive over a dollar in cover call premium, I also received over 10% protection in case OZK came down. That's another reason to consider selling cover calls. If done right, they can give you some protection. The reason why I did that is because Bank OZK had recently experienced a nice price advance of around 8%. So I knew the odds were it was probably going to come back down. By selling that $40 in the money cover call, I had a lot of protection in this position. And I was paid up front $1.07 for that protection. Now let's talk about the good aspects as well as the bad aspects of doing cover calls. First, the good aspects. I already mentioned that you get nice, consistent monthly cash flow. And if you have a stock that you like and the fundamentals and technicals kind of stay the same, stay how you want them, we can just continue to roll that cover call out in time if the stock doesn't go way up in price. For example, here you see a follow-up trade. I deal with my cover call and bank OZK. Notice that several months later on June 14th, I rolled that cover call out. I bought to close that cover call that I'd sold back in April, the June 21st $40 cover call, and I sold to open the August same strike price, $40 cover call. Ironically, for this trade, I received another $1.07 per share. I still like the bank. I think Bank OZK is right now potentially undervalued. So I'm happy to continue trading cover calls against Bank OZK. And I'm very happy to continue collecting cover call premium as well as collecting dividends on the stock. So you can see how if you have a number of these positions, these cover calls can really generate some nice, consistent monthly cash flow for you. That's cash flow that you can live on. You pocket that cash up front, or you can use it to buy other investments like additional stocks that you believe are undervalued. Now let's talk about some of the negatives or the, the bad sides of cover call. And there's really two big ones. Let's say Bank OZK were to go way down in price. Let's say it were to decline way past the $40 strike price cover call that we sold. Well, at that point, all the protection that we got when we did this cover call is pretty much gone. So we could have a pretty big loss against Bank OZK. For example, if it came down here to $35 per share, we'd be looking at about a 10% loss in this overall position. So you're still exposed to the stock if it were to go down in price. Another thing that some investors also don't like, let's say that Bank OZK went way up in price. Let's say it went up to $55 per share. Well, we're committed to selling that stock at $40 per share. So we're potentially giving up a lot of potential upward movement 
if the stock were experiencing a very strong bullish run. When you sell that covered call, you're giving someone else the right to call that stock away from you at that strike price at any point between the day you sell it and expiration. If the stock were to go way up in price, we well, potentially miss out on that whole price increase. But you would get to keep your covered call premium. Let's go into a little more detail about the four things that can happen when you sell a covered call. What's nice about the bank OZK trade that we did is it kind of encompasses all four of these scenarios. Now I've moved the chart to live, to today's chart. And again, what this yellow arrow is, that's the day we sold that initial cover call back in April. Now, if bank OZK went way up like it did initially, that stock could be called away from me at $40 per share. It went as high as almost $50 per share. So I would have missed out on about 10% of stock price appreciation. So if we were to go away from price, well, the stock could be called away from me at $40 per share. But remember, I bought that stock under $39 per share because because of the cover call premium I received when I did the trade. So the stock goes up, it can get called away from you. The second scenario would be where the stock just kind of traded up slightly. And here you see that example. Over about a month and a half time frame, Bank OZK did kind of trade sideways. If the stock was under $40 per share when it did that, well, the stock wouldn't have been called away from me. I could have kept going with the trade. Let's say, for example, I had sold the May option. Well, if at expiration with that May option, the stock was under the strike price that I sold, the $40 cover call strike price I sold, the stock would not be called away from me. So I would have been able to keep my cover call premium and I still own my stock. So I can either just keep the stock or do another cover call against bank OCK. Or in this scenario, what happens if the stock were to decline? We see that's exactly what happened. The stock did go way down in price. Remember, I rolled this position out on June 14th. Notice where Bank OZK was trading at. June 14th corresponds to this yellow arrow here. Although Bank OZK had had a nice run up and then went way down in price. It was trading for right at $38 per share. So I was able to roll that cover call out by buying to close the one that expired in June and selling to open the August one. Since that time, as you see here, Bank OZK has again experienced a nice price increase. From the day we rolled that cover call, it's gone up by over 17%. So if the stock goes way up in price, well, the cover call will probably be assigned if you do nothing with it, and the stock will be called away from you. If it's trading sideways and below the strike price of the cover call you sold, then the cover call could expire worthless. You could do it all over again if you choose to. And if it declines, then again, the cover call should expire worthless. If it's not called away early, you can decide to do another cover call, sell the stock altogether, or just hold the stock for a while. So those are the scenarios. But in all these scenarios, you get to keep that covered call premium that you received up front. Here's the example of a cover call I'm in right now in T Row. I've been trading cash care put options and cover calls against T Row for years. And here you see one of my positions. Notice in this line here that I own 100 shares of T Row. My average price was $105.82 per share. Now I bought this as a result of being assigned some cash care put options, but we're just going to focus on the covered call portion of this position. So my average price was $105.82 per share. Now I'll tell you, I've collected eight ton of premium against T-Row. But for the sake of this one trade, notice the cover call that I sold. I sold the July 19th 110 cover call. I was paid $11.86 for that cover call. As you see in the bottom left here, this option expires in three days. So as long as nothing wild happens with T-Row where it comes way down in price, I'll let this cover call be assigned. So one thing you might be saying was, Randy, you missed out on an opportunity here. t is trading for around $120 per share and you're selling it at $110 per share. That is true. I did miss out on some stock price appreciation, but I received in return is a ton of option premium, a ton of cover call premium over the past several years. So you give up some upside appreciation, but you get more consistent cash flow. And I do, you might want to consider if you want to collect some of that cover call premium, but also benefit if the stock were to go up in price, is to maybe sell cover calls on say half or a part of your position. Let's say you own 200 shares of Apple or 200 shares of t Row. You might consider selling a cover call against 100 shares and then owning the other 100 shares all by themselves. Don't sell cover calls against them. That way you get that cover call premium from the 100 shares that you sold cover calls against, but you get possible appreciation from the other 100 shares. That kind of gives you the best of both worlds. There are some very important aspects of cover calls that you want to understand before you trade in them. The first one is strike price selection. Now that's the price you sell your cover call at. That's the price you're agreeing to sell someone the stock at or that you're willing to allow them to call the stock away from you at. Let's look at an example of that. Here's the option chain for Apple. Here we're looking at the July 19th expiration. That expires in just three days from now. But I want to show you a very important aspect of selling cover calls. Apple closed last night at $234.40 per share. Notice that if we did a cover call, the 235 strike price, you're giving us one the right to buy Apple from you at 235 between now and July 19th, which is three days away, then the last price it traded for was $2.44 per share. 
But what if you want to benefit from some stock price appreciation, but also collect some cover call premium? Well, with Apple trading around $234.40 per share, you might sell a $237.50 cover call. The last one that traded at was $1.48 per share. So that will allow Apple to go up in price by a little over $3 per share, and you still get $1.48 per share up front. Now that's the options that expire in three days, but you can pick farther data expirations. For example, here you see the ones that expire on July 26th, August 2nd, and August 9th. And notice that as you go farther, farther out in time, the amount you would get paid for selling that covered call is higher and higher for the same strike price. Remember that Apple's trading for just below $2.35 per share. So if we sold the July 26, $2.35 covered call, we get $3.90 per share. If we go out another week and sell the $2.35, the same strike price covered call that expires on August 2nd, we get $6.37. So a big jump in the amount of premium we get by going farther and farther out in time. If we go out one more expiration day, notice here at the bottom that if you sell the August 9th, $2.35 cover call, you get $6.90 per share. So the farther out in time you go, generally the higher the cover call premium will be for that same strike price call option. Also notice that as you sell farther and farther from the price, the amount you collect is less and less, or they're closer to at the money. If you sell the cover call, the more cover call premium you'll receive. But keep in mind that when you sell that option closer and closer to the money, you're giving up some potential stock price appreciation. Now let's look at a real life example of how to place a cover call order. Kind of talk through all the information we've discussed so far. Here you see a daily chart of Pepsi, a company most of us are probably familiar with. The first thing I check when I'm looking to do a new option trade is the earnings date. Here you see Pepsi's not supposed to announce earnings for another about two months from now. So I'm safe trading in an option that expires in about a month. I'll totally avoid earnings if I do that. Is this a chart I feel comfortable with? Do I feel comfortable selling a cover call against Pepsi? And potentially, I might. Now this is not a trade I do because I think Pepsi is a little bit overvalued right now, but it is a company that we're all familiar with. That's why I picked this company. And the technicals, they look okay. We see Pepsi has been declining and it's actually making lower highs and lower lows. So technically not that great, but it is a company that's not announcing earnings. And what I do like about this chart is that it's trading on the lower area of where it has recently traded at over the past several years. So I believe that based on its fundamentals, it is trading in an area that's more attractive than it has been more recently. So it's trading for around $163.45 per share. What's a potential cover call we could sell against Pepsi? Let's think about this. So right now we're looking at a chart and it looks like Pepsi is a little bit weak from a technical aspect. If I wanted some protection, I might consider selling the cover call that's in the money, maybe the 160 cover call. That means that if Pepsi were to come down, I'd receive full protection because the cover call premium I will receive up to 160. I should get some extra premium known as extrinsic value for selling that cover call. If on the other hand, I thought Pepsi would go way up in price, then I might sell an out of the money cover call. That'd give me some cover call premium up front and the potential for reward if Pepsi were to go up in price. So let's look at both of those scenarios. Let's look at placing an order for both those scenarios. One, we want some protection we're going to sell the 160 cover call and one where we want to benefit from some stock price appreciation by selling the 170 cover call. Here you see an example of an order screen on a broker. So we put in the symbol of Pepsi. We see this register that is PepsiCo. We'll go to our strategy section here. We're going to pick the cover call, which is also known as a buy right. Notice that it sets the order up for us. It triggers us to do both steps. We're going to buy 100 shares of Pepsi and we're going to sell to open one contract of a cover call. We just need to determine the expiration date and the strike price. So say we're gonna go out one month here. We'll choose the August 16th expiration. That expires right out a month from now. Remember we said we wanted to give ourselves some protection on one trade. So we're gonna sell the 160 cover call. Remember Pepsi's trading for around 163 right now in live trading. We're gonna be paid between $5.30 per share and $5.75 per share for selling that 160 cover call. Notice down here it gives you what you'd expect to pay for this cover call. Remember you have to pay for it because you're buying 100 shares. If you go in the mid, it'll cost you around $157.50 per share. And that gives someone the right to buy Pepsi from you at 160 anytime between now and when this option expires on August 16th and about a month from now. If you'd like to do this trade, you simply go here and click net debit, and then you select the next debit you want to trade it at. Of course, you don't have to see if the market will take it or not. But that's how you place a 160 cover call. When it's in the money, it gives you some protection because Pepsi can come down by $5 and say about 50 cents per share before you begin to take a loss in the position. But you're committing to sell it at 160 per share. Let's now say you wanted some room for Pepsi to go up in price. You still collect some cover call premium, but you also get the benefit of Pepsi possibly going up in price between now and expiration day. We can keep that same August 16th expiration and look to sell maybe the 160 70 cover call. That means Pepsi can go up by almost $7 per share before this cover call is challenged. For that though, we get a lot less premium. We get between 74 cents per share and 83 cents per share. So if we're doing this cover call, it would cost us around $162.25 per share. So we're out of pocket a lot more up front, but we benefit if Pepsi were to go up in price 
and we still get to collect some cover call premium. Keep in mind that if we did this trade, we could always close the order out early. You don't have to stay in this position through August 16th expiration. You can always reverse your position. If you want to reverse this position, you go in here and do the exact opposite. Instead of buying, you'd sell those 100 shares that you then owned and you'd buy to close that cover call that you had sold. So just remember, you don't have to stick with a cover call if you want to get out early or if you want to adjust them or roll them out in time. You would just simply close out the position that you had already sold or adjust it in some way. Another important tip you want to keep in mind is that when volatility is higher in the market, options sell for a higher amount. The same strike price today as compared to tomorrow, if volatility were to spike today, that same strike price will sell for a lot more if volatility is higher as compared to volatility being lower. So generally, all things the same, a higher volatility environment enables you to pocket a little more premium. But the reason for that is because the market is more volatile, so you expect to move has a lot bigger range. Another tip is to consider doing cover calls in undervalued companies. I don't mind trading companies that are fairly valued or potentially a little bit overvalued, but I prefer to trade options in companies I believe are undervalued, especially when I'm doing cover calls. You see, if I end up keeping the stock, I want to be buying them at a price that I feel happy to own them at. So consider doing cover calls in companies that are potentially undervalued, especially if you're starting a new cover call. Another tip is to keep in mind your return. Here's what I mean. Here's the cover call option change for Pepsi. Now it's currently trading for around $163 per share. So here we're looking at the option chain that expires on August 16th. These options expire 31 days from now. And notice your return, this time value column. This is the estimated return you get on this stock at the strike price. So it's telling us if we sold this 165 cover call option that expires in 31 days, we realize about a 16% annualized return on that 165 call option. If you sell the 170, notice the return is lower. It's only 5.2%. That's because you get the benefit of the stock going up past that 165 strike price if that were to happen over the next 31 days. So as you get farther and farther out of the money, your return gets lower and lower. Notice the one at the money is yielding 16.3% annualized. The one $5 above that is only 5.2%, and the one above that is only 1.23% annualized. Just keep an eye on the annualized return you're receiving for that cover call option that you're selling. Selling cover calls is a great way to drink consistent monthly cash flow that you can live on or use to buy other assets. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more of my favorite tips and tricks that I use when I sell options, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.